this amendment. Lawyer, it's a great pleasure to follow <laughs> three such excellent speeches. I've added my name uh, to this amendment in part uh, to emphasise what is obvious, that this is a matter of concern, not just to women who breastfeed, but also to men, uh, particularly men who are fathers, uh, who have wives, have daughters-in-law uh, 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 as well, all of whom are affected uh, by this uh, subject matter. I think when the Minister, I believe it's going to be my noble friend, Lord, Lord Wolfson, when he replies, I think he's going to express two concerns about these amendments, unless he's prepared to accept them, which I very much hope, uh, hope he, he will. He might say that uh, there's a concern that this Amendment 131 is too broadly uh, drafted. I don't understand any such concern, because the drafting is very simple. It ensures that there is a criminal offence only where the woman concerned does not consent and, this is vital, the defendant photographs or videos the breastfeeding for the purpose of obtaining sexual gratification or to cause humiliation, distress or alarm. And that's a very limited mischief is quite properly drafted in that way and it's drafted in that way because it adopts uh, in its definition the ingredients of the offence of upskirting uh, that is already on the statute book. So it's a confined mischief, there's no question of capturing someone who innocently takes a photograph and in the background there happens to be a woman uh, who is uh, breastfeeding. In any event, of course, we're at committee. If the minister thinks the drafting can be uh, improved, I and I'm sure the other signatories to this amendment uh, would be very happy to see an improved version. Um, the other concern, which I know the minister will express, and it's already been addressed uh, by those who have uh, spoken, is that the Law Commission uh, are due to report on the law relating to intimate image abuse. Uh, they've had a consultation. Uh, it closed uh, in May of this year. Uh, the report is awaited. We're certainly not going to see it this year. And the committee may be interested to know that it's a consultation paper that covers 423 pages of material wide range of subject matter, a wide range of complex uh, issues. Uh, after the Commission reports sometime next year, uh, there's no possibility, I would have thought, the Minister will correct me if I'm wrong, of any legislation being brought forward for months, uh, and that's optimistic. Uh, who knows when the Government may reach a conclusion on any of these topics, and in particular on the specific narrow topic that we are uh, discussing uh, today, and who knows, the Minister doesn't, uh, when a legislative opportunity will next occur uh, to bring forward proposals uh, such as those uh, promoted uh, by the noble lady Baroness uh, Heyman. So it is time to address this. It's time because uh, the case for a change uh, in the law on this specific subject is simply overwhelming for all the reasons that the committee uh, has heard. Uh, there's no question, it seems to me, of delay here because the conduct is every day causing great distress to the uh, victims. We already have the model legislation uh, in the upskirting provisions that Parliament has approved, uh, they've been enacted, uh, and they're working very well. One final point, my lords. In July, this government announced their intention to take steps to protect women from violence and from uh, harassment. That's what the government said. It does seem to me that Baroness Heyman's amendments provide an opportunity 
for the government, at no financial cost, to take a small but important practical step. My, my Lords, I rise to 